love what God's doing amongst our nation. Um, a lot of Christians I talk to are really sad at the moment about life. I honestly don't understand that. I don't get it. Um, we've been saved. That should be it, honestly. You have seen the light. I see the light. You've seen it. You're walking amongst a bunch of people that haven't. You carry the light. It's like a code name almost, like spies, kind of like little assassins walking around, carrying the light. Gotcha. Or you can be like we've this morning, you know, we're singing all about praise. I was reading, I'm reading the book of Isaiah at the moment and it's a quite an incredible book because the first 39 books relate to the Old Testament and the last 26 relate to the coming Messiah and I'm into the last 26 now. And as I'm reading the promise of the coming Messiah, I started to realize that, God, what did these people actually think? Because Isaiah wrote this or the, that part of the book of Isaiah was written 150 years before it all happened. And what did the people of Israel think when they were journeying through these times? I often think about the children of Israel, the, the Jewish people, when they're going through the Second World War. They would have known the Old Testament off the top of their heads. They would have known exactly about the coming Messiah. And there's scriptures in there where I can imagine when they were sitting in concentration camps and they would have gone through their mind about this coming Messiah who's going to deliver them and the nations that stood before them would tremble and fail. How do you think that scripture measured in their head at that point? While well, they were watching their families be emaciated and, and, and shot and gassed and all this sort of stuff, knowing that in the scriptures there was a scripture that said this, these kingdoms wouldn't last. And the amazing thing for me is that I find ourselves these days walking a life that is so powerful and yet the church can seem so weak because we, we don't get who we are. I am born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, cleansed by every inch of me, that there is no longer a sin in my life that holds me back, that today I am a Holy Ghost baptized, filled man of God, not pastor, just a Christian, called himself a man of God who walks amongst the people of this earth. Filled with the power that we just read about, that was enough, I shouldn't have got up. That absolutely was outstanding, what read, what read Shane out. <laughs> if you catch it, because guys, ladies, gentlemen, young people, if you would just learn that as Kim said this morning, God inhabits the praises of His people. I am filled with the power of the Spirit. And when I walk in that, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And greater is He that lives in me than it is in the world. That no matter what goes on in this world, vaccinated, unvaccinated, which is a thing of the past, crying out loud, let's get over it. If you get COVID in these days, just treat it like a common cold. Who cares? If you get sick, Jesus, you're my deliverer. If you get cancer, Jesus, you're my healer. If you die, you're healed anyway. What's it matter? When we walk this earth, the Bible tells us that they will know us by our love for one another, by our joy, the joy of the Lord that fills our heart every day. When I walk into my workplace, there is a joy. This week, I was just saying to Kay, in the last month, I have had staff and managers and CEO walk into my office, sit on my chair because I've got a, a they like my office because I got chairs. So they come in and sit. And they come in and they go, plop in their chair, and this is their words to me. What's going on, Darren? I'm thinking about what's in front of me, what's going on, and they're thinking about the world. The last month, it has increased. Probably this week alone, I had four staff sit in my office and go, I don't get what's going on. We know what's going on. 
Now, we can be grumpy about it. We can be scared about it. We can be afraid. We can be all these things. But Jesus said, these things will happen. These things will come. Offenses will come. All these sort of stuff will come. But he says, but whatever you do, keep your eyes on me. Keep looking at me. For I have delivered you, for I have brought you life. There was a man in the Bible by the name of David who had just come back from a battle. And he had won the battle, but when he came back, all the women and children in his whole town was burnt to the ground. That's a victory, isn't it? You're sitting there, we all sit in our little worlds today and go, oh, when is the world, when is my family going to change? When is the money going to come in? When is the winner, 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 winner? But he says, come on. He said, what's David do? He goes out, they want to kill him. I haven't had the church want to kill me yet. Maybe close. But they wanted to kill him. They said, they were going to kill him. And so what's he do? He goes out, stands in the middle of the field and gets into the spirit. And he goes, God, what's going on here? But I'm going to praise you. One of the Psalms is one of those Psalms, one of those praises. And he's praising to God and he's doing it. And all of a sudden he goes, right, we're going. And they go and get everybody back. Wipe out the people that took their their families. They get more and they get all the gold. They get everything back. And it's amazing that the spirit of praise that as it arises in you in the midst of the darkest hour, we should be walking around not with the head in the sand approach going, oh, nothing's going on. Folks, stuff is going on. If you don't know that this is a bad time in the world, something's wrong with you. I get it, but I am not going to let it consume me. What's going on? Somebody, somebody said there's, um, there's all the war, you know, all the stuff that's happening overseas and the China and the dragon and the bear and we love Revelation. We're getting ready for the, dry, the dragon, the bear, the turtle, I don't know. <laughs> the rapture. Don't stand under a fan because there'll be casserole in heaven if you get caught up in the rapture. And I and, and, and started to think about it and I was driving home the other day out at Mount Isa and Janine and I were talking about this stuff about the dragon and, the, and we were just chatting away and I said, and I don't know if you've seen on Facebook or what, was, on, what is it, on one of the YouTube channels just recently, um, Putin, Putin got up and he talked about in the West they're saying they don't know all the things that the West is doing. Has anybody seen that, that clip? It's a really great clip. I think he might be born again. Don't quote me on that. But as he started to speak about what is happening in the West, how the degradation of society, you've got to watch the clip. I said to Janine, what if they're not the bear? Janine went, oh. what if they'll drag and bear thing? Because some of you sit here right now, that's stupid, don't even talk like that. Heretic. What if all this stuff isn't the way we think it is? It's a totally irrelevant situation, but my little mind starts to think like this. And I go, what if we've got this wrong? In the West at the moment, we are tearing down morals and society like like it's just on sale. The stuff that we're facing at the moment in our own communities, if you go to, to countries in Europe, I was talking to a friend of mine over there, they said, we don't even, well, this isn't even a discussion, the stuff that you were talking about. It's not even in our news. So don't think because what's happening here, the rest of the world is on board with, because what I'm starting to see is opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for God to move through me. Here's the, here's the kicker. You've got to be in a place where the season that you're in right now, you're okay with. Because there's a book in the Bible, there's quite a few, there's 66. But this one says this. There's an appointed time for Everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. Every event. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant 
and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak. That's a good one. There are times when you need to be zipped and there are times when you should speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there to the worker from that in which he toils? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves and he has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart, yet so, so that man will not find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. Know this, that no season lasts forever. Whatever you're going through right now, it won't last forever, whether it's a good one or a bad one. And everybody in this room has gone through different seasons, believe it or not. Correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, but in the Northern Hemisphere, in winter is when the the earth is closest to the sun. In summer, it's furthest away. In the northern hemisphere, and flipped. I was reading a NASA site last night. They were telling me that in winter, the earth is actually closer to the sun in the northern hemisphere. I thought, if that's true, some of the times when I feel closest to God... is when I feel like I'm furthest away. A winter is always, if we go, let's, let's be real Bible geeks here. If you're in a winter in your walk with the Lord, it's not a good time. It feels like everything's gone over. But it's interesting that if that is true, then in the darkest time or the hardest time, we're actually closest to the one that we need to be closest to. And I don't know about you, but I've found that when times are good in my life, I've actually probably negated some of the things that I should be doing in those seasons of when things are good. At the times when I really press into God, when I really, when I really start studying, you know, like last year when I started reading the Word, the Bible through, you know, like at the moment I'm going through my second time and I'm almost to the end of the, that and ready, getting ready to start my second, third run through the Bible in 18 months. And I'm really excited about it. But I started it in a time when things were not good. I thought, God, your word says this. If I do this, I'm going to, this is what will happen. I'm just going to do it. And his word has brought life to me. His word has brought power. And even when I'm reading scriptures, I don't understand. Something in it just brings a life to me and I don't get it, but it works. And there's a depth that comes in your life, an authority that you walk in with it. I don't get it, but it works. But what I'm finding is that we begin to lift our God up in this day and this age. And we are the people that are filled with that power. Not just this church, but any person that says, I love Jesus, that Jesus is the Lord of my life, has that power. And we can walk this earth. And it doesn't mean people are going to love us. And it doesn't mean just because I love people, they'll love me back. Church, we've got to understand this, that Jesus was the greatest lover of all, and yet he was despised by many. He was silent when he needed to be silent, and he spoke when he needed to sp speak. He was silent through most of his trial. Think about this, but no, not us. Let's jump on Facebook and rant about our trials. Let's rant about it to all our friends. Let's rant about it, but Jesus, through his trial, remained silent, and the only word that he said... The only words that Jesus said was, it is as you say. He wasn't the one, he didn't jump up and go, this is unfair. And we walk our lives and we keep walking through this planet. And, and I, I, I don't understand us as, as believers sometimes. And I watch, the, well, I watch people who don't have Jesus. I get that. I get what they go on about. I understand it because... They don't have the anchor of their soul. We do. 
And so when the world comes and things don't go our way or we don't like something, we need to be people that go, God, you got this, you got me. And I will praise you in the midst of it. I will praise you because you are the one. You are my God. I will lift your name on high. Praise is the power that comes within, with everything that I have. That God, I thank you today. I don't even feel like sometimes praising, but sometimes I sit down and I start to think about the goodness of God. The goodness of God in my life. And that this church is a blessed church. This house is a blessed house. Your home is a blessed home. Your people that come into your, the people that come into your presence during the week because you've got Jesus, because you know the Holy Spirit. Those people are coming because you have life and life abundant. You've got life that when they come, that's why people sit in my office and they go, what's going on? I don't understand it. It's amazing to see that people are desperate out there. There's a desperation in people's lives. And our job is to be ready. When we look at the world, we see all these things. You know, I think of Paul in prison. That wasn't a great time, right? When he was shipwrecked, wasn't a great time. Look at all the amazing things that happen in the Bible. They are not. So... They were sitting down having a feast and they were enjoying spending money everywhere. They were having a great time and life was, was so awesome. I never read that in the Bible. He was in prison, praising Jesus. He was in a shipwreck, throw everything overboard, we won't die. He went to save somebody at a fire, gets bitten by a snake. We walk out of here and go, oh dear, my life is hard. Folks, I didn't see anybody. I didn't pray for any snake bites this week. I didn't pray for you in prison. We, we, we've got to get perspective of this whole journey that God has got us on, this journey that of life as we walk, because it's really short. I'm 56. I just turned 56. I was talking to Kay 21 years ago. We were driving up the Rockies. As we were driving up the Rockies singing Take Me Home, Country Road to John Denver, having a great time. We were driving up. We were at a conference over there with Ted Haggard. And, and it was a great time and all that sort of thing. We were driving up the road. And she goes, hey, guess what, everyone? It's my 59th birthday today. This year, we're celebrating her 80th. 21 years ago. I was talking about this with my kids. I said, you know, when we were first born, when you guys were first born, I was like, what? How old was I? 20, 20 something, 24. I'm 56 for crying out loud. That's ridiculous. Jesus was supposed to return by now. There was no way in the world that I was going to be this age according to all those preachers back then. And last night, I'm sitting down in the chair with my, putting some shoes on, getting ready to go out for dinner. And my grandson comes up to me. And he, I oh know, yesterday morning, two things. My, son, my grandson, Jackson, comes up to me. He goes, Pop, what are you doing? I was going to get a haircut. 7 o'clock in the morning, go and get my haircut. And he goes, first, only words, what for? <laughs> You'll keep. <laughs> Second thing, last night, we're sitting in the, I'm putting my shoes on and getting ready to go out. And little one, Jet, comes up to me. He goes, Poppy, what are you doing? I said, I am going out for dinner, putting my shoes on. He goes, great. He says, where's your dad? So we get this question all the time. At the moment, it's a big thing. Who's your dad? Who's your daddy? All that sort of stuff. But he, he, he is there infatuated with it. And so I've been saying, oh, my dad's in heaven, blah, blah, blah. And all that sort of, we have a big conversation. Anyway, yesterday I was like in a hurry and I said, oh, he's dead. And he looked at me and goes, dead? He goes, why is he dead? I'm just putting my shoes on. I want to go out for dinner. My dad's dead. He goes, why is he dead, Pop? I said, well, I said he was old. His body started to go, I don't want to do this anymore. And he just went home because he said, and I said, besides that, there's a person that he wanted to see a lot more than all of us. And he goes, who? I said, well, hopefully you don't get to see him physically soon. But I said, it's, he just wanted to get to heaven because God and he thus, we had this big explanation thing and he just went, 
and walked off. Like that was enough. And I thought to myself, God, this world is, I remember my dad's 50th birthday. I remember celebrating these things. I remember doing all this stuff with my dad and then all of a sudden he's gone. And I'm at the age now where I'm actually in the age group where I've lost some friends in this age group. So tomorrow I could be gone. Very good servant, isn't it? (laughs) But God is amazing. Come on, church. You walk this earth filled with the power of God. Draw, draw on that knowledge to write this second, right? In every situation that you're facing in your life, you and God are one. Every situation, just draw on it right now. In, in your work, in your family, in your marriage, in, in your finances, in your whatever it is, you and God are there. And stop putting up, oh, there's this situation and that person and that. No, 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 no. God is with you. He's also working in them, but he's with you. And he has brought you to a place right now where he is looking at you. And he's dealing with things and he's shaking things and he's wondering, he's showing you what's not to be held on to and he's showing you what can be held on to. Like, like Shane said this morning, just ask him. God, what do you want me to do in this situation? How do you want me to answer? How do I be in this time? That's who you are. You are the light in this world because Jesus dwells in you. Jesus is the light of the world, but if he's in you, you also are that light. You are filled with his power. You are filled with his grace. And in every situation that you come to, you are able to offer that to people when you don't even feel like it. When you think to yourself, well, do you know, they've said this or they've done that. You have an opportunity right now to bring grace to that situation. Or maybe there's a situation that you're facing right now and the Holy Spirit is at work in it and you can't see it, but he's at work and you're saying, God, help me right now. I don't want to blow this. That's real, that's humanity. Humanity begins to say, I am not able to do this, but God, you can. We serve a great and awesome God. We serve a God who is all powerful. We serve a God who is omnipotent. We serve a God who created the heavens and the earth. We serve a God who has no end and no beginning. We serve a God today who created the very life and breath that you breathe right now. We serve a God who is well able that no nation of this planet, no nation on this earth is able to overwhelm even though they think that they have got the power. There is one day coming where recommendations Pence will be held. There is also a day coming where joy of shouts of jubilation will begin to cry out and men and women from every globe, every corner of the globe will begin to cry praises to our God. Where darkness will flee and light will shine. There is a moment in your life right now where you have the opportunity to breathe the life of heaven, to breathe it in and go, God, this is how I'm feeling in my body. This is how I'm feeling in my spirit. This is how my mind is thinking right now. Wherever it's wrong, you can bring correction because your word brings truth and your word is the corrector in my life. Your word. Not the latest preacher on YouTube, not the latest story that's out there, not the best book that's written, but your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And God, I will walk that path. I choose today to walk it because you are my God and my King. I choose today to be your servant and no one else's. I choose today that in this day, I will rejoice in you and be glad. I will extol your love more than wine. Father, I will draw me unto you and let us run together. And I will rejoice in you. I will rejoice in my God. I will rejoice in everything that He has done. When I can't see it, I rejoice. When I can't feel it, I am blessed. When I can't hear Him, I know He's there. That God, I will keep doing what I've always done and seek You. That's the church of the living God. The church of the living God that walks and breathes and lives Him regardless of what's going on. Because folks, this is where we're right now about to go to, if you're into 
speeds of sound and marks and all those sorts of things. We're, going to be, we're about to break through one of the marks. And I don't know if you know this, but you probably do because you've all seen Top Gun. And if you haven't, too bad. But if you are about to break through, come on, if you are about to break through some level of mark, whatever it is, there is everything shaking, rattling. There's instruments are falling. Everything is going wrong and it's shaking and you can even lose consciousness. And as they break through, you hear the sonic boom. And it just all goes. Whether Jesus is coming back tomorrow, next year or 10 years time, there will be sonic booms. There will be shakings. There will be things that we need to just say, God, you are with me. We are people filled with his presence. My son, who you are very aware of, is not here today. I don't think he couldn't come. He has a meeting online this morning. And he said to me, he said, last night we got home from being out to dinner. And he said, Dad, he said, I just know that if I can hear God, I'll be right. I said, mate, I said, you are hearing God. He goes, but what? Because he's looking for this. And he might get it because he is desperate for it. I've never seen some, I haven't seen somebody like this for in a long time. And he said to me, he said, one thing, Dad, he said, I'm, he's, in, he's looking into this business uh, online thing and he's really excited, but then he gets disheartened. And he said to me last night, he goes, Dad, he said, I just want to partner with the Holy Spirit in this. And I'm, I mean, this, you've got to, if you know the conversations that we've had, this is like, this is throwing, doing my head in right now because I've got this son who's just trying to understand God and I'm wanting to make sure I'm not messing it up. And he's trying to get this, this thing and he goes, I just, I just want to partner with him, Dad. He said, because everyone I talk to, it's all about them. It's all about them making money. He said, I just, I really genuine, and I think he's genuine this. He wants to make money so that he can, he can go and do what God wants him to do. And he said, what's that? He said, Dad, it's, there's so many people out there that are messed up. They need to know God loves them, but I can't do it without money and I need money to do it. I said, well, you can. I said, but I get what you're talking about. But his heart is just turning towards God and he's going, God, I just, it's constantly turning. God, speak to me, show me. I, he wants like a burning bush thing. I was thinking the last night, I'd go out the front and light the big tree out the front and say, Ethan, run outside. But you see, folks, we carry this power. And it gets stifled by our moments where we just refuse to keep our eyes on him and look at the situation. The passage that Shane read out this morning, and even the whole song service this morning, was a song service and a praise passage of, God, you are God. Because you've got to understand something. It's really not about you, but it is. It's more about you than you think, but it isn't. He's after you. And every time that you start to, to get upset about something, my wife just drives me nuts about this. She's not here today, so she drives me nuts. I'll say something, I'll complain about something that's happening and she'll go, she just says this one little statement, just annoys the bejeebies out of me. So what's in you that needs to change in this situation? I had a pastor that I worked for once and he would say this, he said the same thing, but what he would say is, 
But I said, oh man, they just get on my goat. He said, well, let's kill it. <laughs> yeah, that's just a stupid statement. Let's kill the goat that I'm riding. <laughs> but he's talking to you today. But what is in us when the world, something's happening in the world, what's in you? Is it fear that's driving? What is it that you need to address? Because if it's fear, that's become your master, not him. Is it, is it anxiety? Oh, but Darren, I've got anxiety. You, you just, I just get it. I, I get it. Hey, 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 hey. Whew. I get it too. I probably had one of the worst financial weeks that I have had in a long time. I just been, I've been saving my butt off in the last 18 months and I had this amazing bank account. I was really impressed with myself. I was ready to go. I was ready to do some stuff. We were ready to have some house things and there was some stuff I felt we could sew into and all that sort of thing. And three bills came in. Three that were not supposed to come in. None. Stupid ride on mower. Stupid ride on mower. Out the back kicking the wheel. Grumpy about it. So angry. Boom. Out it comes. Then something else happened. Bang. And yesterday, I'm in the washing room, the laundry. Hear the washing machine going. Thank you, Jesus, for this amazing laundry machine. Not ticking. Because it doesn't tick. It's not supposed to tick. Just as were. But you know what? God is still God. He is on the throne. And I have to trust that He's got us today and tomorrow. He's got us. He's got us in His hands. He's got us right now. And he's going to keep us because this is his promise. We are his people and he is our God. Whether it's going the way I think it should, when it's not going the way I think it should, that's when it's about me. You know, you've been taught. I've been in those same meetings where you've been taught, you know, Come to Jesus, everything will be fine. Let's put our hands up for those who've gone. My life is the amazing space that it needs to be. No, because why? Life still happens, but I've got Jesus. Life still happens around me. People die around me. People, people are, are, are hurting around me. My job is to be the light in their lives right now. Because there's seasons for everything. There's seasons in every way. It says this, there's no season lasts forever. The Psalms talks about it. There's a change of seasons. And just because the seasons change, it doesn't mean you've been bad or good. It's just a season. But people often come, you know, they'll talk to, I even have this thought, what have I done wrong? Have I done that? Have I done something wrong? We're always looking for that. Don't let the season you're in define you. Whatever you're going through now, don't let it define you. Build consistency regardless of the season. Be ready in season and out of season, the Bible says. Just keep building consistency. The thing is, when we're going through a tough time, we stop doing what we should be doing. When we're going through a good time, we go, oh, this is so good. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. But when it's tough, we go, oh, where is he? We we, We stop seeing what he is. Learn from the season that you're in. Prepare for the next season. Get ready for the next season because the one's going to come. Don't worry. We're in autumn now and winter's about to come. Doesn't feel like it, but it's happening. And guess what? After that, spring will be there too. Summer will be there. So if you're in a great season right now, go up to somebody who's not and encourage them. If you're in a bad season, look for somebody who's going through a good season. Or if they're not in a good season, look for somebody who's got the right words they're speaking. Bringing life to the situation. And don't assume the season you're in, everyone else is in the same season. Don't assume that you're all going through the same thing. 
You know, people will often say, oh, I'm going through this. I don't understand why people are just so happy about life at the moment. And other people are going, I don't understand why people are like me. I don't understand why people are so upset about stuff. But that's the thing. Don't assume that we're all going through because we're all going through different things. But be there for one another. That's what the body does. And remember this, finally, God is at work in every season. He's working. He's working. He's working. You send the little assassin in there to destroy, to make sure that you can keep him in front. We have the Holy Spirit to work in us. Today is that day, the breath of life that he breathes in us to bring hope to the hopeless. And today, know this, that God is with you. He is your hope. He is your salvation. And Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for the promise that you bring to us every day. That God, that the seasons that we find ourselves in, Father, are many and varied. But the one thing that's constant, Lord, is that you are in them. You're with us. You're walking with them, with us through them. And so I pray for every person right now in this room and those that watch online, Father, I pray that you would, Father, today, reveal to us who you are in the midst, where you are, what do you want us to do, what, what are you asking of us in this moment? Lord, help us not to go way down the track and go, but Lord, what about all that down there? But God, what about right now? How am I supposed to respond in this moment. Father, I pray that we would be refreshed by your word, that we would be washed by it, that we would allow it to, to cleanse us, that we would allow your promise to take a hold of us, that we are born again, that we are washed in the blood of Jesus, that we are cleansed and made whole, that all my sin has been taken. And that, Father, that is no longer us, it's no longer part of our lives, but we are free. I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your word. And we give you all the praise today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your goodness. We give you all the honour. We give you all the honour.